Good morning. Welcome to the 73rd Randwick Boys High School and your presentation day. On behalf of the Randwick Boys High School community, I would like to extend a warm welcome to all our parents, carers and friends present online this morning. As we gather here today, I acknowledge the traditional owners of the land, the Gadigal people upon whose land we are meeting. I pay my respects to their elders, past and present, and the elders from other communities who may also be joining us today. I now welcome Mr. Rascal, Principal of Randwick Boys High School, to deliver the Principal's report. Thank you, Ms. Petros. It is my pleasure to report on the major events that have taken place during 2021 at Randwick Boys High School. COVID has once again played a big part of our school year. Various strains, et cetera, have dominated our lives in 2021. Restrictions in the wider community also made their way to our classrooms and our playgrounds. The year began like most others, with our traditional clap-in assembly for our newest students, Year 7. We welcomed Year 7 at our first assembly of the year, with our school standing as Year 7 enter. It is a lovely tradition that says a great deal about our school and students who attend. Our swimming carnival was also be able to be held in early February and was another great success. Many fabulous performances were recorded and students all thoroughly enjoyed the event. We were lucky enough to hold some excursions early in the year, including the year seven camp, and then COVID affected all of our planning and many of the events we traditionally hold during the year as well as co-curricular learning for our students were cancelled. I would like to make special mention in 2021 of our NAPLAN results. The NAPLAN results have been steadily improving over the past six years and the 2021 results continue to depict our talented students performing extremely well against similar schools and state averages. I'd like to congratulate especially Year 7 and Year 9 students for their efforts. Term 2 included many excursions. The planned Ski Canberra excursion went ahead, as, as predicted. Grade sport finally began. Our athletics carnival was able to be held. Musical opportunities such as the concert band, string ensembles, our vocal group were all placed on hold. Term 3 was an interesting time. The entire school community and most of Greater Sydney went from face-to-face -face teaching and learning to all students learning from home. Staff were also teaching from home and daily online lessons, whether it be Google Classroom, Teams or Zoom lessons became the norm. Staff and students adapted so well to our foreign method of teaching and learning. Parents also adapted to having their children at home whilst also maintaining their own workload. Some students thrived during this time and some students struggled. We held year meetings to keep the students connected with their school and were desperate to have them return to our corridors. It was a lonely school without them. Myself and the two deputies for semester two, Miss McNeil and Miss Harris attended every day. Other staff dropped in on a regular basis and prepared work for their classes. The entire term was difficult, especially for our year 12 students completing their higher school certificate. Even the trial higher school certificate examinations were canceled and modified online assessments took their place. Term four began with learning from home. However, this would only last four weeks. And then finally, we welcomed all students back to face-to-face -face learning. Fortunately, we were able to hold our year 12 clap out, our year 12 graduation and our year 12 formal, all important milestones in year 12 and their journey. Unfortunately, we were not able to hold our leadership investiture to welcome our new leadership team, prefects, SRC, vice captain and school captain. In term four, higher school certificate examinations went ahead later than usually they do. Incursions and mentoring were also able to resume and essential parent meetings could also take place. Even a modified orientation day was able to be held with 128 year six students very keen to learn about their new school. 
our annual presentation day can obviously go ahead today as well, even in a modified format. Unfortunately, we could not share our usual presentation day grandeur that traditionally marks our school celebrating the academic citizenship and sporting achievements of so many of our students. No guests are allowed on site today, obviously. However, the live stream is being viewed by many in our community right now and will also be recorded. Even with COVID affecting our school and some teaching and learning and co-curricular activities, it will not stop many outstanding achievements, events, accolades, all of which will be celebrated and acknowledged today. I would like to make special mention of our brilliant staff who are so passionate and so dedicated to our school and our students and each other. They were able to adapt quickly to the trials of teaching from home whilst, for many, supervising their own children. They deserve huge thanks for the professional manner in which they adapted and cared for each of their students during learning from home in 2021. This thank you extends to our fantastic SAS staff, Drago, the ladies in the office, assisting in science, food tech, the library, and the roles office. They provide so much assistance with the short and long-term coordination of our school and should be proud of their efforts in 2021. Our strong parent support also continues. Our hardworking PNC met in person and via Zoom twice per term for the year. Unfortunately, many of the events planned for our school and the PNC planning were cancelled. In particular, the annual trivia night was cancelled and fundraising initiatives were also put on hold. They did join myself and Miss McNeil for an update on where the school stood in term two, and they were presented with facts and figures, which was in the form of a situational analysis in term two. They also assisted with a welcome barbecue for new parents and guardians, barbecue during the local election, and having representation on staff selection panels. I would like to thank in particular our President Jason Bates, our Vice Presidents Leanne Bergen and Philip Booth for all of their efforts coordinating meetings, grants, newsletters, panels, landscaping advice and all round support. It is amazing to work with such a group of committed parents. Thank you. To our students, I would like to offer one word to describe them in 2020. One, and that word is resilient. They had one entire term and four weeks of adapting to a new way of learning and engaging with their studies in 2021. They did it well, and many performed exceptionally well in their tasks, their modified examinations, and they should be very proud of their efforts and achievements. Even their yearly assessments were modified and completed online. We really do look forward to having the students remain on site and learning face to face as this is what makes our school even greater. <clears throat> Unfortunately, the 2021 school show could not go ahead as planned. <clears throat> this means the last two years have seen the school show canceled. This is so very disappointing for our students, our staff, parents, and choreographer, Alicia, who worked so hard preparing for the brilliant performances that they love to showcase. We are hoping that the performance will go ahead early in 2022, and that excites a lot of people, especially our ex-students who are involved. Please watch this space. We did enjoy a visit from Murat Dizda, our Deputy Secretary of the New South Wales Department of Education in 2021. He took a tour of our school, listened to update, updates regarding initiatives, improvements, and future directions, as well as, as, well as discussing departmental changes with our school executive. It was amazing to have Murat's attention and hear firsthand where the department is headed with their own initiatives and targets. Two major documents were also discussed regarding Ramwick Boys High School in 2021. One was the strategic improvement plan, which was written by our hardworking executive staff, as well as input from their second in charge of each project team and each faculty. Again, major planning took place and new programs and directions have been planned for the next five years. Our own school-based targets have been set and we hope to make even more improvements in results and connections with our school in 2022. 
The second document I'd like to mention was our external validation, where an external team analyse our data and inform us of their opinion regarding teaching, learning and leadership within our school. We were very pleasantly surprised with the validation and we're not far off where we, as a school staff, thought we sat in 2021. It was the second time the school has been through the process and the improvements from five years ago were extremely pleasing and encouraging. The long planned school upgrade is still being considered. The planning stage has been lengthy and we are still tweaking the final submissions regarding the project. I hope the current school community, as well as the future community, is happy with the outcome. Once we are aware, we will publish the details as per instructions from school infrastructure. Finally, I would like to thank our entire school community for their efforts during a very challenging year. We thought 2020 was difficult with COVID. 2021 has actually seen more disruptions to our day-to-day -day teaching and learning. I look forward to another successful year in 2022 and beyond. Thank you. I'd now like to welcome Mr. Phil Narika, Year 7 Year Advisor, to the podium to present the Year 7 Awards.